I went to Catholic school my whole life. You hear all this talk about God and the characteristics of him. I said, oh, that's like my parents. My father and mother were God to me. For me, it was all comic books. I remember seeing Batman going, oh my God. It just spoke to me. So by second grade, I put two and two together. I need to pay attention in school so I can understand what's going on in comic books. The basketball rim in the schoolyard broke and everybody cried. But I was like, hold up! I got the best parents in the world. My father put a basketball rim in my backyard. So after school, the kids got someone to go play now. So they all would come to my house. One day, Joseph just came over alone. Me and my brother had turntables. So when Run saw my turntables, he was like, my brother's Russell Simmons. He manages Curtis Blow, Jimmy Spicer, Houdini. I was writing rhymes for me that nobody knew about. He would come over, play ball, we would DJ. Come over, play ball, DJ. But then one day I forget to put my rhyme book away. So while I was DJ and he sits down in my basement and finds my rhyme book and just reads and goes, Daryl, you wrote this? And I was like, you know, it's like a hobby. And he says to me, the day that I make a record, I'm putting you in my group. And I looked at him as like a foreign language. Because y'all do that for real, not me. It's the same way I put my favorite blanket on my neck and say I'm Superman. That's what hip hop was to me. But it wasn't for the world to hear. July 82, a letter comes in the mail. We're proud to inform you that you've been accepted at St. John's University. So as soon as I see that, put the paper down, run downstairs to the basement, write a rhyme about it. I'm DMC, in a place to be. I'm going to St. John's University. Since kindergarten, I acquired the knowledge. After 12th grade, I'm going straight to college. And I went back upstairs to my room. Phone rings, it's Joe. Daryl, what? Remember four years ago when I said, if my brother let me make a record? Yeah, grab your rhyme book. We're going to the studio to make a record. We went to the studio, recorded our first single. It's like that, and that's the way it is with the B-side Sucker MCs. The best thing that happened is Live Aid. Bill Graham, one of the greatest rock promoters in the history of music, he was a guy that said, I will not participate if you don't put Run DMC on this bill. And they said, why do you want those guys? Their hip hop's not gonna be here in five years. And put Bill Graham had faith in what we was doing. about the sneakers we love. That's all it was. Adidas heard about it and made us the first non-athletic entity to receive a major sports. And I don't play no basketball, but I got a sneaker deal like Michael Jordan. That's unheard of. People around me started saying, you need to be on the charts. You need to be on the radio. You need to have a hit record. You need to be rich and famous. You need to make money. The down thing was depending on something outside of me for my success, meaning alcohol. Every neighborhood, I don't care if it's Irish, Asian, Puerto Rican, whatever, has a guy that can take the most shots and drink the most cans. But I'm drinking a case a day, but not knowing why, just to get through. So I get acute pancreatitis, I go in the hospital for almost a month. Doctor looks at me when they discharge me, you have two choices, son, drink and die or not drink and live. In 
93, one of the groups that we inspired, P-Rock and C.O. Smooth, P-Rock produces the title song, Down With The King, puts us back on the road, back on the charts. We get back on MTV, everybody celebrate. Easy e flies in, like from gangster rap to Will Smith. As soon as that happened, I wanted to kill myself. I'm gonna kill myself, but before I kill myself, I'm gonna write a book. And in this book, I wanna say, yo, what's up world? I'm Daryl McDaniels, you know me, one third of the groundbreaking rap group, Run DMC, but I'm really just Daryl. I was born May 31st, 1964 and, oh, let me try that again. I was born May 31st, 1964 and, I know my birthday, but I don't know no details about it. So, call my mom. I said, I'm doing this book and I know my birthday's May 31st. I need to know some more details. How much did I weigh? She was like, you was 11 pounds, 10 ounces. You was a big baby. What time? You came into the world, 11.30 a.m. All right, Ma, thank you, thank you. I love you. I love you too, son. Bye, bye. Hung up the phone. An hour goes by, the phone rings. It's my mother and my father. Hey, son, hey, dad, what's up? They go, we have something else to tell you. You was a month old when we brought you home and you're adopted, but we love you. Bye, click. So imagine what happened to me. I'm already doing this. Totally destroyed me. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? You self-medicate. I went back to drinking. Doing the very thing that could kill me. My wife kept it real. She said, you're drinking because you can't mentally handle the fact that they just told you was adopted. And I'm fighting against that. They take me to L.A. to go audition for a movie. The agent turns to me that was cast in the movie. D, where have you been? I'm sitting here, he asked me that. Some of him say, oh, you want to know where I've been? Well, I just found out that I was adopted at age 35 and the whole new and this and that. I just let it all out at him. And he did something that was so marvelous for me that nobody had done. He just said, I can't possibly understand what you're going through. But there's somebody I think you should meet. A week ago, my adopted friend Sheila was in my office in the same condition as you because she was depressed because she was doing a search for her parents and couldn't find them. And I knew the name. I knew he was in the group Run DMC, but I did not know him. We started talking about being adopted, all the similarities. I became obsessed with her because she's a real live adopted person like me. We started group meetings with other adoptees. We had meetings in LA, we had meetings in New York. So that loneliness went away. My therapist had to look at me and said, your situation doesn't define who you are. So what you're adopting? She told me, you're like two of the greatest adopted force of kids in the history of this universe. I'm like, oh, Jesus and Moses. Mary came home and told Joe, I'm, I gotta show you something. He could have said, get out of here. He said, nope, that kid has a destiny. What about Moses? He got put in the water, got taken by Pharaoh's daughter, brought into there, and then he's sitting here one day, yo Moses, yo Moses. It's God. I need you to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So those two people have a destiny, and it's what the whole adoption thing is about. Me and Sheila, we sitting there talking. We said, we're very fortunate. We started thinking, what about all those other kids? We got to do something for the ones that might not get adopted. We got to tell people, encourage people to adopt because we need more Moseses, Jesuses, and DMCs running around here. Daryl and I determined to do something for these kids that will give them opportunities and experiences that we were fortunate enough to have because we were adopted. Everybody from the kids in the hood to the kids in Beverly Hills, their situation doesn't define who they are. They do. Every rhyme, every sneaker, every beat, every stage, every drawing. I am adoption. I'm Daryl McDaniels, 
DMC in a place to be, and I am that king. <laughs>